This week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman begins a mule deer expedition that starts her out in Alberta, a place she's always dreamed of hunting. It's early season and the bucks are everywhere. Melissa also has a tag in Colorado where she has her sights set on one tall velvet monster. Everything is spot and stock with a bow, so it's going to be an up close and personal 20 days of action-packed mule deer hunting. Mule deer, well they might be one of the toughest animals to go after spot and stock, especially when you're bow hunting. But let's face it, tough, well a lot of times that equals fun. Now I was doing an early season hunt. I was going to be going to Alberta for some great mule deer hunting. Now I've heard all about the big giant mule deer up there and the numbers of mule deer. But once I got up there, well my jaw about hit the floor. There were mule deer everywhere. And the coolest thing about Alberta, well you know you've arrived when you see all those windmills. Our first morning out, the sun hadn't even come up yet and we were on the move. We had spotted a big group of bucks feeding in the stubble fields and my guide Tanner Sinclair and I were off to cut them off. Tanner had a pretty good idea of where they'd cross, but time wasn't on our side. They were on the move. As we crept along the edge, we were trying to get a read on where they were headed, but before we could even get set, the bucks had already begun to cross into our field and spotted us. The entire group of bucks took off running for the hills, and all we could do is sit and watch. Look at how huge. The good news, it didn't take long for them to settle back down and we decided to just sit tight for a while and see what they'd be doing next. We're going to walk over the hill when they get over the edge of the hill. There's a bunch of coolies running down towards the river and a bunch of brush they bed in down there. We'll walk over the edge, chances are they're going to bed on the, or the west side of that brush mm -hmm. so they can watch below them and then we can use it. Yeah, we can use that brush and work around it and see if we can't get within range. As we neared the area, we tried going extremely slow and just peeking over the edge. But as it happens many times, the big old buck, well, he spotted us before we could spot him. Right there.
literally not. He's 77 now. He's, he's, he's farther. We'll get closer. They're just feeding. We'll just let them walk around that corner a little bit. They're just feeding to one of those trees. Yeah, they're right straight over the hill here. The big buck's closest, and the other ones are about 20 yards past him. They're all about around 70 to 100 yards. They're going to the Yeah, why not? We've got a group of probably five bucks and several does that we've just watched, been following home morning all the way before the sun came up. Well now, they're spotted, we've got them right in this big group of trees. And the problem there, where they're bedded, they can see us before we can see them. We don't have a good advantage at this point and it's really not worth going in and busting them out. So we're gonna just let them bed there for the day, ease our way out of here, and hopefully we can come back this afternoon and take them. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester Ammunition, Thompson Center, Cuddyback Digital, Bogpot, Cabela's, She Outdoor Apparel, and Hunter Safety System. early season muleys anywhere in the country, well you're going to be dealing with them in bachelor groups. And this can be a great thing because, well, you get to see all the bucks and probably pick out the biggest one. But the other tough thing is, well you've got a lot of eyes watching you. So you really need to be careful on your stocks. And that's exactly why we backed out earlier that morning. We had watched a big group of bucks go into some trees, but there were just too many eyes and not enough wind to cover our stocks. So we've let these deer sit for the afternoon and it's gotten super windy. Not surprising for Alberta, but we're going to use this wind to our advantage. We're going to come in the back side through this cooler. The wind's blowing perfectly this way and we'll be able to get to a spot so we can see what they're doing. That way we're close enough if we need to make a move. We're within range and we can make that move. And if they go back out the way they came in, we're looking at a 20 yard shot. And in this wind, that's about all we can take today. So. Hopefully we can use this room to our advantage and get in tight. yard shot. I just wasn't comfortable. My pin hadn't got settled yet. And the next thing I know, this buck is bounding off and there I stand watching a giant Alberta mule deer run away. I probably had the chance to take that shot, but it's just one of those things. Things happen quick and I wasn't quite ready. 60 yards is a long shot. I've been sitting here waiting for him. And this brush is just a little bit too high. <sighs> is that 60 yards? <sighs> 60 yards is a long shot, especially when you've got wind to factor in. And I'm a confident believer that if you're not completely steady, don't squeeze the trigger until you're ready. This time, I wasn't quite ready yet. Next time, well, I might have to learn to get ready quicker. Back, so that man, have, what do we do? <laughs> we need to get back on this side and go on around these windmills because that one buck's on its way back. Hopefully they come back. You need big. Now 
Now we had spotted some nice bucks that morning. We were watching several different areas and I thought I saw a buck's antlers out in the middle of this field. Now as we were going up to this area, well we were really doing it pretty much in stealth mode. I was believing that this buck could be in there. But as we got up there, it didn't look like this buck was anywhere around. And there were hay bales out in the field. So I thought it'd be a great idea to hop up on one of those hay bales and try to look down and see in there. It's getting serious. <laughs> Where's your pole vault? This big buck's gonna stand up right here now. <laughs> Is this spring? I don't think he's here. <laughs> oh, he's right there. Shootable distance, too. <laughs> I was trying to spot the bug. <laughs> we, did you get that on video? Oh, what? <laughs> that bug, the, the, all the noise, the falling, and then, hey, I bet you a big bug's gonna jump up. <laughs> that bug's like a big six by five, too. It's a big buck. I can't believe we just did that. That buck was like 60 yards. It's one of those things. You're out hunting, you figure he must have left, gone away, and this was the buck we had been after. He was right there, within close reach, but completely gone now, and who knows where he went. This was my big chance, and it didn't work out. And that's hunting. I will always look back on it. In fact, you know what? I might remember this hay bale story more now because he busted out of there and I didn't get him than if I'd ended up getting him. It's hard to say because I'll never know. But either way, you have to be positive. It was an excellent trip, a wonderful experience, and yep, I let the big one get away. But that happened. I was happy, got some great stocks in, and I was hoping I could use it in my knowledge base to hopefully go on the next hunt and put those skills to good use. Now, although I was pretty bummed about Alberta and having to leave without getting a mule deer, especially after 10 days of hunting, well, it really was a great trip and well, I'll never forget that whole bale hopping experience. Either way, I was headed to the next mule deer location and I knew this place was excellent. In fact, it had produced incredible bucks for me in the past. In fact, just last year I went there, took a beautiful unicorn mule deer, and I'd be hunting the exact same property. The only difference? Well, last year when I was hunting, it was a late season rifle hunt. Totally different than what I'd be expecting this year. This time, I was going after them early season, the bucks would still be in velvet, and everything had changed. I decided to crawl up in the tree stand. I'd have a good vantage point and hopefully I could see where these bucks were coming in. And as the morning sun came up, well guess what else was bedded right there. That big buck that I had been told about, well he bedded right at the corner, right next to the road. I'm not kidding, they were probably 20 yards from my truck. Boy could you see that big old high rack. Now this was a beautiful muley and I knew that this would be a buck that I would like to go after. Now usually my style of hunting is a little more aggressive, but on this hunt, I wanted to kind of tone things back. I wanted to be more observant and spend more time scouting than actually out hunting. Now it seems kind of weird, but if you play your cards right, sometimes that's the best way to do it, especially when you're bow hunting in early season mule deer. A lot of these bucks, well they don't even know they're being hunted yet, so they're still in that nice, easy summer feeding pattern. And unless you put the pressure on them and alert them that they're being hunted, well, you can only hope that they just keep that for a little bit longer. So 
So now I've got this big buck and all his buddies out in the middle of the alfalfa field. I decided it's time to get down on my belly and start crawling up. As I was going through, I was just taking it easy, going a little ways, checking, going a little ways, looking again. And things were really working out. I was getting in close. I got within 70 yards and my heart was pounding. But as I finally decided to drug, he just kind of turned and they moseyed right on away. Now I had a great broadside shot literally seconds prior to that. But as I got to full draw, they didn't ever even notice I was there, but he just simply turned and started leaving. just don't feel comfortable with taking a shot 70 yards on a muley. I think we can get closer. He just kind of faded off the edge. I'm going to try to find a place and set up here tomorrow. This is where they've been coming through. I think this is where he wants to be. Tip of the week is brought to you by Kenny. The facts say a lot, but the ride says it all. You've probably heard that the first time that you hunt that trophy buck is the best chance you have to tag him. The reason why? He doesn't know he's being hunted yet. If you haven't taken precautions to reduce your human odor before the hunt, this stand location will collect human odor. Your trail in and out, anything you brush up against or touch will all collect these alarming human odor molecules, alerting deer to possible danger. After your hunt, if deer come by and notice the telltale sign of a hunter, they may avoid the area for days or even weeks. A mature buck, he may avoid the area for over a month. That's the last thing you want if you're going to hunt this same stand anytime soon. Supercharged scent killer is odorless. Some scent elimination sprays have odor. If you can smell it, a deer can smell it. Spraying your hunting outerwear in the bottoms of your boots with supercharged scent killer before you enter the woods will keep your area smoking hot and greatly increase your odds of continued success. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic, North American Hunting Club, Rage Broadheads, Matthews, Can-Am, Wildlife Research Center, and Pot Mox. Sometimes it can be very difficult when you get your eyes set on one beautiful buck. But that's kind of what had happened to me in Colorado. I had spotted a beautiful high rack mule deer and I had gotten in close to him a couple of times. But it really was a game of cat and mouse and I was trying to figure out where he was going. The hardest part, there were two main food sources in the area that these bucks and all the deer were really using. And I kind of had to make a decision each day because there was no place that I could watch both. So I either had to choose the alfalfa or the apple. Now I decided to try different setups in different places. I had tree stands, ground blinds, brush blinds. I was mobile trying everything, but it just wasn't coming together. I felt like this buck, well he knew what I was doing and he was reading my playbook right before I could make my move. Instead of trying to always stalk him and figure out, okay, there he is, how can I get to him? I decided, you know what, change of plan, something completely different. I'm going to try to get in front of him. I want to figure out what his move is going to be before he gets it. So I found a place where they usually like to feed, meander out, middle of a huge field. No possible way to get to him. After a long time, well, they would usually filter their way up to bed for the afternoon. Now, a day before, I had seen him filtering through one nice area. So I decided that's what I'm going to try. No more trying to stock up on him. It just wasn't working. This time, I was going to try to get where they wanted to be and hopefully wait them out.
One by one, these deer started filing through. Now I was all set up, my camera was on them, but I couldn't stop shaking. I got to full draw and I just waited. As soon as I had my shot, I released my arrow and the coolest thing I had ever seen, I got right back on the camera and this buck went down on camera. I could hardly believe my eyes. I was so excited and let's just say I did a little happy dance because I was thrilled. Look at this buck. This has been a buck. I have put more time into this guy. I have so much footage of him. Been filming out here on my own and he is an absolute beauty. This is what Colorado hunting can offer. Giant high rack muleys. I couldn't be more proud. This right here, this is a lot of time, dedication, and most importantly, patience. Coming up next week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa's in New Mexico putting in her time for one of those big Gila bulls. She's got a bow, a great guide, and they're scouring the terrain in hopes of finding one of those legendary bulls. However, the weather is not cooperating. So fast forward to late season and Melissa is back at it. But this time she grabs her muzzle loader as she heads out for her biggest bull yet.